how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope you're all having a great start to your week so far. Uh, we had a very nice weekend. It was Father's Day this weekend. So yesterday we went out to my parents and just kind of hung out. Lots of food, swimming, it was really nice. It's getting hot though. So I posted on Instagram in my stories yesterday a screenshot of the next 10 days, which was like 99, 99, 99, and then 100, 100, 102, 108, 106. And this morning it's even worse. One of the days says 109. So we have five days in a row, it looks like, that say um, like 104 to 109, like in that range, I think, right? Yeah, five, five days in a row. Worst one being 109. Uh, oh, we're going to do a lot of indoor videos this next week. So I, that means I need to go clean out the studio. Maybe you should go uh, do some succulent arrangements. Yeah, maybe we should. That kind of sounds fun. Or some cooking stuff. Oh. That'd be fun. Like do bare minimum outside. Keep things alive, barely. Mm -hmm. And and it is windy. So we're going to have windy and heat. You know, it's interesting, though. If you look at our forecast and we have the 109 degree day, well, that nighttime temperature is like, is it 70 or 60 something? 73. Yeah. So we go from 109 to 73. So of course which is it's kind windy. Of, well, I don't know. I mean, it, it is like that in high desert, which is very nice. It's yeah. really, really nice we that it cools hot, down. We get hot, but it cools down, yeah. So yeah, that's that's one kind of saving grace of being in the dry, dry heat. One. One. <laughs> well, I think it helps the plants too, because I've heard a lot of people complain in the south that there's a lot of plants that they can't do in the south just because the fact that it doesn't cool down at night. Right. It's like there's no reprieve, but at least our plants... And humidity. Oh, I don't yeah. know how you guys do it. I think I talked about that last week. Humidity, I don't... Yeah. Uh, the heat and humidity together. Oh, you guys deserve a medal for gardening in that. Also, okay, let me talk about my ice really quick because I talked about it for the first time in last week's recap video. And I talked about how like we buy our ice at the Chevron in town because it's the best ice ever. It's um, like the nugget ice, it's very soft and I don't wanna drink things that have bad ice in them. Like it discourages me from drinking things. The very day I talked about that in a video, I noticed that the owner posted on Facebook that like, well, that's a wrap. It's been 23 years, you know, great serving the community. And I was like, oh, did they, are they going to close down the Chevron and close down my <laughs> ice source? And so I thought, well, sure, certainly not. They probably sold it to somebody. So I thought I'm going to go down there like tomorrow and I'm going to grab a bag of ice so I can at least see what brand it is so I can contact the ice company. And they had already done the switch over. They sold to Jackson's. Jackson's has crap ice. <laughs> and they had already done the switch over. But thankfully, all of you guys in the comment section said that you you guys need to get a GE Opal ice mm -hmm. maker. It's a countertop ice maker. It's worth it. It's amazing. So many emails. In Lots fact, I just I just saw one like moments ago. Did come you? Through. Yeah. And we bought one. So <laughs> this is the GE Opal ice right here. It is amazing. So far, it's working really well. It made a kind of a weird sound yesterday. Yeah, I did. I recorded it. In fact, I could play a little bit of it. It was so loud and I, I didn't know what was happening. So I went in there really quick and filmed it because I figured if I ever needed to show somebody like, Proof I don't know, it. a service person or right. somebody from GE, although it's under, you know, I mean, we could just send it back, but either yeah. way. Yeah, it's it still loud. making ice, so and it hasn't done it since then. But yeah, it's really wonderful soft ice. So anyway, just in case you want to know, I was going to do a review video of the GE Opal ice maker on this channel, and I asked members on the main channel if they would want to see it. But then Aaron and I couldn't come to an agreement on how we should film that recap video. <laughs> so we were like, just nope. Let's just open up this box and get well, the I ice think, made. I still think you should make like a little, a quick little video on, yeah. on how it works. It just feels weird to do a review on an ice machine on the gardening channel. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's expensive though. Like, yes, but you know what? I was telling my brother about the machine. I'm like, I think it's gonna encourage me to drink so much water, so it's for my health. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you can rationalize it. It'll make you drink so much more ice water. It's good for you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the videos from last week. The first one was planting 30 more tomatoes, which I swore I would not ever do after uh, last year. I planted 30 total tomatoes, and right now I have 39 tomatoes planted, and I've got, I think I have five or six or seven more. Do you really? Yeah, well, most of them are the good-hearted, so I can tuck them into little areas. They're the small ones, um, so that's good. But you know what? I'm trying out the Florida weave staking style, and that's kind of the whole reason I decided to go ahead and just plant all the tomatoes I had. Um, because it's fun to try out new methods and there's a lot of people who do the Florida weave. In fact, 
I got messages saying like, what is the deal? Like, why is everybody doing the Florida weave? I'm like, I don't know. I had noticed that as like, I mean, I know other people do it, but I didn't know it happened to be like the YouTube trend at the moment with content. Oh content creators. Um, it's funny how things like that go in ways, but like we didn't contact anybody. No, and I didn't notice any videos like featuring it specifically this year. I noticed some from the past because I watched other people's to get an idea of how to do it. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Tina said, uh, just an idea. Why don't you zip tie the tags to the poles up at eye level? That way you won't lose them under the foliage like the ID tags, mm -hmm. because they do get lost. It happens with the dahlias too. Um, hopefully that sound isn't picking up. So the front lawn is being trenched for sprinklers as we speak, and they have the trencher running. Okay, so we're gonna pack up and move to another area because I think they're gonna be trenching for a while out there. Okay, hopefully this is a little bit better. So trenching up there for the sprinklers, and this morning the concrete truck came and poured the footings for the Hartley, and now there's you can see the rebar that's going to come up into the stem wall. So like I'm seeing things kind of... There's so much rebar. There is so much rebar. Um, the plans uh, called for like, was it twice as much rebar? Twice as, what? as much and a bigger diameter. So usually our contractor was saying usually it's half inch, right? Rebar and they're using five eighths inch rebar and twice the amount that's normally required, I guess here. I don't know, like, but they're going by the engineered specs. Yeah. And maybe it's because we're dealing with a, gra a glass structure. You know, I mean, we don't want it to go anywhere. Right. I'm, I'm cool with that. The concrete guy was like, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you should see our grass though. Oh my word. I didn't even think about the fact that we should probably turn our sprinklers off a couple days prior. I think the concrete truck would have ruined it either way. It would have, but I don't know that the ruts would have been quite as big as they are. Yeah, it's, maybe not. And it's likely we were going to rip up that area. I mean, the whole area around the greenhouse is going to be changed a bit anyway. So just like, sets me on my on my path yeah, I guess yeah just like everything else around here it's just such a mess right now and it's gonna get worse because time for a garden tour oh yeah so <laughs> so we were not planning on doing this back area so like right in front of where we park there's this kind of random white arbor with a small picket fence section mm -hmm. that goes to nothing like it just stops on both sides and then we have a skinny little sidewalk that leads up to our back sun porch and um anyway we we really want to change that at some point because we want to make the walkway bigger and make the entrance a little bit more um like make sense i yeah, guess yeah it doesn't feel like it makes sense it's like there's a lot of uh zigzags yeah it's like oh like you take a left and then a right and then a left right. and then a right, and right. Then a left. it's funny to watch people <laughs> that ha aren't used to this garden they'll come out the kitchen door and then they'll take off to uh, like on the brick patty or pathway rather that's right on my right and it takes them to the fireplace and i see them stop like <laughs> like, kind of like yeah. look around like where am I out. at yeah. yeah and so I see them turn around and come back and like try to navigate their way back out anyway it looks like we're going to tear up that walkway sooner than, rather than later because the electricians need to trench electrical out to the Hartley to do that from the side the electrical panel on the side of the house they have to kind of follow the pathway of the of well the they can concrete. go anywhere it's just you, your option is either to rip up the flower bed or rip up the pathway well it's not just the flower bed though it's they would go through so many water lines and other things that we have like multiple yeah and there would be so much repair work that would have to be done it's kind of like well we were going to tear this area up anyway you mean if they were going to go uh, uh down like the, the driveway, route of the driveway which yeah. i would it would seem most um like path of least resistance but it actually isn't well, I don't know. I think it just isn't based on the fact that we've always talked about getting rid of that pathway or like redoing that pathway mm -hmm. because it's too narrow. Mm -hmm. It really is too narrow. Like when you're bringing groceries in yeah. from the trucks, it just, it feels like Well, you can't get, uh, you can't get a gorilla cart down it. Like the seven right. cubic foot one that I like, that's my preferred size. I can only bring the little green one down here and make the corner without trampling plants. So trampling. 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 Trumpling, tr tromping Trump, on. Yeah, tromping on. And uh, whatever. Trampling is a word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, where I don't even know where we were at. Oh, we were talking about zip tying the the tags Are we still to on the, the first video. Yes. Okay. I'll I'll go quick. Okay. Great idea, Tina. <laughs> Great idea. Next uh, co a question. Mendy said, "Where did you get your plant markers, or where do you suggest getting them for the best price?" I got those down at my parents' garden center. Um, some of them I ordered on Amazon, and we'll try to find a link for both of them, which... What? 
<laughs> you were talking to me about links and the recipe. Oh, I forgot yeah, to, yeah. To, to, <laughs> anyway, we will try to remember to link to those markers. Gardener Supply also has a really good selection of if them online. If Laura ever says, I will put a link to that down below, that is code for I will I'm a, forget about it at this moment and never think of it again. That is code for Ken, while you're editing, maybe you can grab the link. <laughs> if, if Ken, yeah, Ken gets the links for most things. He does. Um, but if... Uh, if I say I'm going to type up a recipe, like I said in this in the cooking video this week, I, I forgot. Anyway, I need to get on it. Linda's. It's, it's funny though because when you're done with the video, you're done. Like, yeah, and you I you have moved on. Yeah, and you don't even remember what you did. Nope. Cracks me up. It's weird. I have a very weird memory. Like it's very selective. Linda said, "This is a small scale farm. Will you eventually supply local restaurants?" I mean, maybe, I don't know. I mean, never say never. And I've actually thought about that because, you know, you put all of your eggs in one basket and you're like, well, is this a smart thing to do? You know, should we, basket. yeah, should we diversify a little bit? And maybe that is something we can cultivate. I feel like we're so like far away from that a little bit because we have so much to do and it's, you, I can't yeah. focus on like really pumping stuff out. I know I could pump out so much produce out there and I could pump out flowers um, if I did succession planting and I was really efficient and smart with the space, which I am 100% not right now. It's kind of like, let's just get the one crop in the ground. And if that is all we do this year, I am happy with that. Yeah. But you were just telling me about um, another YouTube channel. You were watching their live stream. It was, uh, you can't eat the grass. Yeah. And they do flower farming, mm -hmm. right? Like exclusively do, or do no, they do? No, I think they do vegetable production as well. But they were talking about the same thing. Yeah, they were talking about how they don't want to become a, a, con a farm solely for the reason of making YouTube content, mm -hmm. um, which I completely understand. Yeah. I feel like we are that though. It's kind of like been a gradual thing though. Yeah, you like know? We, we do things to create more. Well, okay, because we enjoy it. Like mm -hmm. we love we love to have beautiful gardens, have a beautiful mm -hmm. space. So it's kind of a twofer. It's like, mm -hmm. well, why would you not? When you already like to garden, why would you not just want to make bigger gardens mm -hmm. and then share that with people, make videos about that process? And when it becomes your job, it's like, would we have bought that property if we didn't have a YouTube channel? No, we would we would garden on a smaller scale. We would. Like and a much more manageable Like if we scale. bought that, we would have probably kept it pasture and had a couple cows yeah. or a couple horses or something like that on it. It would have been a little bit different. But when YouTube becomes your job, I mean, because that's what Aaron and I do full time and we have people that help us now, mm -hmm. like you need to create stuff. You need to have projects going on to you know have things to share yeah well and to keep things interesting for us you know because it's yeah. like it's super fun to do bigger projects like, yeah. like, like buying the land and making bigger gardens mm -hmm. I feel like that also helps us stay yes. sane so that mm -hmm. we're not doing the same thing over oh like planting potatoes every year planting yeah garlic. don't you think it'd be really boring if you just yes like, it would didn't I mean, have something new going on it's what you do the same things every year as a gardener I mean that's just naturally we do plant the same crops we you know do those things but if that was all we were doing and that's all the videos we were putting out then I think I would get bored and it, maybe Maybe you guys wouldn't because I know we're getting new people all the time. So mm -hmm. you would hit a new, you know, maybe the new people hadn't seen your video from last year. It's, it's crazy you know? to me when I look at the analytics, like especially on YouTube. Of I think I saw, don't quote me on this, but it was like in the last 28 days, there was like 41,000 new subscribers. Like 41,000 really? people clicked the, in the last 30 days, clicked the subscribe button. That's Thank so you many guys. new people. That's awesome. So when you mm -hmm. think about how boring like a, a topic is, like think about there's so many new people That's that haven't what I'm seen saying, those but past you know, videos. You, it's it's hard for us. Like you yeah. get you get in your own kind of zone and you need new things. I, Expanding yeah. uh, is more for our benefit, just to just to keep things yeah. spicy and like what a blessing that we're able to actually do it. Too, yeah, you know. But you know we totally could if we needed to use that space to and maybe it's something buckle down and do production yeah. gardening well you know and maybe it's something become farmers well i'm interested in that yeah. like it's interesting to me so maybe once we have things buttoned up and we don't have so much going on right now then i could focus on you know creating that or cultivating that space and making it work for us a little bit more and hiring somebody maybe even to manage that space like yeah your you job. almost have to as one thing that i've seen with i mean we live in an agricultural area we have there's lots of farmers around and they work their butt off yeah they do. and i feel like if we ever went that direction 
you couldn't do production gardening really and do videos at the same no. time. Videos is a different ball game. I mean, anybody who's tried to make videos of gardening projects, you know, oh my, yeah. And I like not to complain about it at all because I'm super blessed to be able to do it, but it, it's a lot more involved. It takes you four or five, six times longer to yeah. do a single project than it would if you could just go out and do it. But, and then you start feeling guilty because then I'm like, Aaron, I just need a day where I don't have a dang camera pointed yeah. at me. And, but then I get outside and I'm like, yeah, but I really kind of want to show everybody this. Right. Or like, I feel like I'm like, I don't know. You. It's funny because um, you you tend, when you get behind, you start to feel like, like you just said, like, I just got to go without filming. Like it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a drag. But once you start doing it, you kind of start feeling like, uh, like you want to bring the camera along. Yeah, like it's I should like, be sharing this. Yeah, but it's more than just should. It's like it's like a want. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's a desire to share. Yeah, it too. that's true. Mm -hmm. And so it's this weird like catch twenty two. When we're not behind, you don't feel that mm -hmm. same way. It's just when you feel like there's too much to do and not enough time. Linda, are you happy you asked that question? <laughs> <laughs> the open can of worms. That's quite a tangent. <laughs> yes. Okay. Dorothy said bright blue shirt. Did Laura buy some new tops after your ironing debacle? No, I had to like fish one out of the bottom of my ironing pile. We need to go shopping for you one of these I days. I know, I just, like I'm wearing white today because I'm like out of every, everything needs to be ironed. <laughs> Paula says, you mentioned that you're giving them one gallon emitter to each tomato plant. Could you please add for how long you water them and how many times per week? I meant to ask you, did you turn it off after that one time they were stuck on? They were stuck on for a little while and like the whole area yeah. was wet. Um, they weren't stuck on, they were turned on. I think maybe Paul had turned them on to- Oh, to like supplement? To, to supplement or okay. something. But, um, I, okay, I think that they're going off for 20 to 30 minutes twice a day right now. Just to get rooted in. It is Just to get, so dry well, and windy. and it's like 100 degrees. Yeah. And so they, they start to wilt later in the day. So yeah. if you have it run like closer to 8 a.m. or you know 7 a.m., mm -hmm. whatever, it, they they start to kind of look a little ugh by you know and 6 p.m. You, you don't want to let your plants get to the wilty point because then it stresses them out and then they just won't perform very well. So right now, even if it takes a little bit more water, you know, a little more. Well, often, they're just out like out in the brutal I, sun, like all day sun, yeah. which is fine. They'll they'll be fine. But anyway, it's twice. They a were day. last year. Remember how big they got? Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Um, Lolly said, "How long did it take you from the time you started drilling the holes until you had them planted and watered?" I would say under an hour. Those holes were hard to dig. Mm -hmm. I got through the first one, the first line, and I like always have to like kind of fight back the urge to call you and be like, Aaron, you want to come out and aug some holes? And I'm like, yeah. no, 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 I can do this. <laughs> like, it's just, it's mind over matter here. I just need to get my butt behind the drill <laughs> and get these holes dug. And, but yeah, so I think once, once I got going at 45 minutes, maybe. Uh, KFC said, Laura, we'll just add another zone. <laughs> How many zones can your irrigation controller handle? Which brand, which phone app? Uh, it's, I think it's a Hunter ACC2. It's not a residential controller. It's like a commercial. It's like a commercial grade, like something you would see at a university or a, you know, public park or, or garden or something like that. And it's connected to two wire. Yeah, it's connected via two wire. Via. So it's like a, it's like via? a, via, via, via whatever. Um, I never know. It, uh, it makes it to where you can branch off from it. And I guess the, the, the wire that uh, controls the zones, you can run it for like miles. So they'll use it in, um, in city projects where you've got- Like trees. Yeah, along. where you need to run you know, your mm -hmm. zones for, for a long, long way and not have, and control it all in the same mm -hmm. controller box. So anyway, you can put like 200 zones on it. And I'll, we're already using close to 50. Yeah, 50 or 60. And the grass is going in, which means... Probably another 10. At least for that one spot. Yeah. So it's it's awesome. It's awesome. But yeah, it was it was tough. It was tough to spend the money to, to buy it. But I just, I didn't really know what else to do. Yeah. Um, well, there was no other option. Most of the, most of the residential units cap out at like 16 mm -hmm. zones. Which is, was fine. Well, we had 16 zones prior mm -hmm. on our current property. Mm -hmm. 
Jill said, do you plant any marigolds or basil in amongst your tomatoes in your raised bed to confuse the predatory bugs searching for lunch? Um, yes. So I think that that video went up this morning, right? The ranunculus digging. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did plant marigolds, petite marigolds below my tomatoes in there. Um, so occasionally I'll do that. I've got some basil nearby. Um, but you know what is interesting? And I thought I would show you guys because I'm re getting ready to harvest a lot of that cabbage I planted out in the cut flower garden, like the, the hedge. Oftentimes, I err on planting a lot just because I just usually plant a lot but I plant a lot knowing that I'm going to sacrifice a few of them to bugs which I have out there most of the cabbage are 100% clean and beautiful and a couple of them are so covered in aphids it would gross you out but I don't I don't spray them or do anything with the aphids I just leave them on the plant and as long as they've got plants to attack they leave everything else alone um, and so I'll do that like with calendula. Calendula is an aphid magnet, so is Nicotiana. Um, so I'll kind of strategically place some plants around that I don't care as much about and let them be the host plant for the bad bugs. And then I don't spray anything, <laughs> which is kind of a nice feeling. Um, anyway, but if you can employ some companion planting like that, like the marigolds around the tomatoes, I always think that's a good idea. Sunshine Mystic Moon said, I want to know how do you protect plants when you have temperatures that spike up to 106 and 107 and 109 in the summertime? I think we, ju we just water. We just make sure everything's well watered. Sometimes that means twice. Like for anything that we're carrying over in, in high tunnels or greenhouses, they get checked twice a day. Hanging baskets, which I do very few of, get checked twice a day. Mm -hmm. Everything that we can run drip to is is drip irrigated which means like if i see something flagging i can go turn on that um drip zone and i'll give it extra water but that's pretty much all i do i've seen other youtubers use shade cloth and they, they kind of treat it like it's something that they have to do otherwise it's like the only option but i've never seen you do that do you not like the way it looks or do you don't you know like the effort all of the above really yeah um I, I think too, like we talked about earlier, our night, our daytime temps can get so high, 109, but then they go down mm. to low 70s. And I don't know, I mean, the shade cloth is helps. to protect them from sun. I mean, we get, yeah. we get the sun with no cloud cover and no humidity protection, like nothing to protect them. And so I would think that the low nighttime maybe wouldn't affect that and yeah. the use of shade cloth. But yeah, I don't want, I don't want to have to do that. I want things planted here that can handle it. Sure. And if I can get a paniculated hydrangea to bloom beautifully, and look the way they do here with 109 degree temperatures without shade cloth. Like yeah. that's the kind of plant I want. Right, sure. Give me all the limelight hydrangeas. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I, I want all the things that can handle that. And that means sometimes that we have to cull some stuff out. Yeah. Digs and Dirt said, the video seems exceptionally clear. Are you using a new camera? Yes, we've been, you probably noticed, we've been try trying out a new camera over the past, I don't know, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, there's pros and cons to everything that you're going to use, but the new camera we're using, the one huge pro, is that I go through vlog cameras like nobody's the old business. Vlog, vlog camera. Yeah, those vlog cameras just like they're not sealed, and so uh, dust, dust can get gets in, in and water can get yeah. in. Yeah, and then it makes the picture quality horrible because there's like flares, light flares, mm -hmm. and you can see the dirt. Um, and I was going through one of those vlog cameras like once every other month, I would say, mm -hmm. or once a month. And they're and like they're, 700 bucks. Yeah. That was like a massive expense. Yeah, it's way too much. And the, this camera is like less than half the cost or half the cost. Yeah, it's like half the cost. It's, and they're waterproof. It's waterproof. Sealed. It's, yeah, dust sealed. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, there's pros and cons. Um, Somebody I, said it made me look orange. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it does. The coloring yeah. is going to be different. But you know what? The other one made you look orange, too. Yeah, you know, I'm not there really were times... orange in real life. <laughs> no. No. But, but there were uh, there were times that the other camera didn't seem to do the coloring justice. It's light. Lighting's weird. Um, and so, yeah, cause somebody said my hair looked extra red in one of the videos, which I think it did in the pond video. It looked really red. Yeah. And it does have that kind of look in the sun anyway, but it would look like, whoa. I hadn't colored it. In fact, I'm due to go in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway. Well, you know what? You guys will have to give us like um, your thoughts mm -hmm. on on what you think. Knowing that this one is half the money, and we will probably like never need to buy new ones. And it's so lightweight. Because you're not going to be you're not going to be breaking them. No, it's so much smaller and lightweight. Like it's I don't get tired out. The other one I would get a little bit like after you try doing a take like 15 times and it's yeah. not working out, then my arm would get like start to burn. Sure. So I don't know. 
Uh, okay, let's move on to the next video, finally. Uh, how long have we been doing this? Okay, it's a really long video. Planting around our neighbor's pond. So we took some plants over to our neighbor's house. Oh, how many did we count? We planted Oh, I don't know, maybe a hundred? Yeah, a lot of plants around their pond, and I feel like we could have kept on going. Yeah. It yeah. was a big space. It, it was, was a very a large big space. space. And I thought, like, we have so many plans. Yeah. We're just going to deck this out. It's going to be so fun. And then we get them all in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> just kind of like Well, plants them get all a lot up. bigger, though, too. Well, they will. They will grow quick, especially all the big annuals that we put in there, like playing the blues and the Supertunia snowdrift. Yeah. Well, that'll get big. Okay. So uh, first top comment was, who else wants the Laboutiers <laughs> as neighbors? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. They'll hear you and I fighting with each other out here as we're filming videos. Yeah. No, do film it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> you quit making that face at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Susanna said, this is so awesome. Do you like have an instant picture of what comes or what goes where or do you make yourself a plan? I never make myself a plan. Hardly ever. It has to evolve. If you do ever make a plan, it seems like you never stick to it. No because it evolves when you yeah. put something down then you're like oh i kind of want to shift the line this way like getting me to do flower bed lines for the sprinklers oh uh, and i'm still i'm all, like i know that anything can be fixed at the end of the day like you can fix it and you can move stuff around but it's costs money mm -hmm. and it costs time and so it's always such a huge like <sighs> weight on on me to know that i have to like do a solid permanent line and not do it wrong. Um, Sue said, is that your old pergola? No, actually, our old pergola went to uh, Ken, our editors. It was, did it go to their house? Ken, did it go to your house or did it go to one of your family members? <laughs> I can't remember. It went to a different yard though. Next comment was lots of red in this garden. Anyone else, anyone else have a feeling Laura is trying out red varieties without committing to putting them in her own garden? <laughs> yep. No judgment. I don't put anything red in my own garden either. Uh, yeah, when I find somebody who enjoys that color in their garden, I will put it in there all day long. I enjoy planting it. It just doesn't go with my soft color palette over here with the apricots and lavender and pinks and well, things like, like that. Well, you like red. I mean, just not in your own garden, but yeah. you appreciate red when you see it. Uh, I do. I put around. it in my cut flower garden. Mm -hmm. And I also want to just uh, make a distinction between red foliage, foliage and red blooms. Mm -hmm. Because every time I put like a red coleus or a red Japanese maple, people are like, ooh, what are you doing? Putting red in your garden yeah. totally different. Red leaves need to be in a garden, but red blooms don't necessarily need to be in every garden. I mean, they're just, they're very like show stopping. They will draw attention to themselves, which you gotta love that about mm -hmm. them. Um, but they don't just play, they don't play nice with pastels Yeah, in my mind. Joyce says, and who is digging holes with you, Laura? That was Paul. Paul's awesome. Paul comes along and helps with whatever we need. And it's nice because you know, those kind of people you work with and like, you're always in each other's way and you like don't communicate very well and like you know i'm like that with my Paul dad just gets it i'm like that with my dad behind the counter at the garden center i think my dad's like that with everybody he's yeah. just like this is my space everybody needs to like yeah. get out of my way um and then you know you kind of like do a dance with uh, some people to where like you just like read each other like what you're going to do next and mm -hmm. paul and i work that way together so far like it's worked out really nicely my mom and i work that way together my sister and i work that way together I don't work that way with very many people you and i don't work that no way aaron and i do not work well together that way um it's best when you and i have separate jobs yeah like if we work on the same project, yeah. you need to be doing your thing and I need to be doing mine, which is honestly- Key to a happy and healthy marriage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works out for making videos yeah. for the most part mm -hmm. until um, so a lot of times you'll ask for my opinion on things and then I feel like you don't really like it very much <laughs> when I get well, it. <laughs> not sometimes. Um, anyway, yep. Yeah, so that was Paul and he actually, we got the planting done. He went and ran all the drips so we went and he run, ran new drip in the whole area for them and then he mulched the whole thing. And he, like, I don't know that he's necessarily a type A personality, but he knows that I am about certain things. And he does things to, like, how I want them done, mm -hmm. which is so nice. Like, you know, when we mulch, we don't get mulch on plants, on leaves and things and make a big old mess. And he doesn't. It's like precise and perfection. So anyway. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Coraline said, is there a reason you don't put ads in your videos or even have a sponsor? You're the only YouTuber I'm willing to watch hours of ads for because I know the money you earn is going back into this beautiful garden. Did you not put ads in that video? Uh, you have the, yeah, you have the option, right? There's or? ads. You know, not 
ads don't always play for people. Like mm -hmm. sometimes it'll play the video without putting it out on there. Mm -hmm. But but there are ads on our videos. We um, can't pick what ads they are. Like it's just no. Yeah, we don't yeah. have any control over the ads. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. So I guess you got lucky and didn't have any yeah. ads. How about that? But thank you for being willing to watch hours of ads. Yeah. That's really sweet. RK Sailor said, enjoyed your pond landscaping. What do you have around your aquascape waterfall? Nothing right now. I mean, very little. We've been working on getting the plants from around that aquascape. It's still there uh, because I don't think it's quite in anybody's way to put the Hartley in, but it's going to need to move. We don't have it running currently. And we and Greg knows. Greg actually may even come back out and help us move it to a different location yeah. or do something a little bit different. Well, he um, wanted to come out this year and, and move it. And I just told him, like, like we don't know where we want we it yet. We don't know where we want to put it mm -hmm. yet. And we have so many things going on that we just need to like, I think we need to get it up, mm -hmm. the Hartley up and get the new land kind of like set a little, set bit. Us a little mm -hmm. bit. And then we can start putting things in. Yeah. So hopefully he'll come out maybe like next spring. And I know it seemed a little weird. It seemed like, oh, you just had this thing put in and Greg came and brought it in. And then you just, you know, like decide just to tear it out. Like... That's well, kind of rude, be, but we didn't know the Hartley was going to go in yeah. when the, when the, uh, when that waterfall went in. We it was months after that we decided to do the Hartley. So anyway, it was not planned that way. We had planned our intention was to keep it in that spot. So thankfully, it's a kit and it can be moved. Cindy said, "Are these the same neighbors that moved their trailer for you? If so, you both got something wonderful in return, and so did we. Yes, they are. They are wonderful neighbors. We've known them for." 30 years long 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 time and they popped this uh canopy up uh, it's like a canopy like a carport it's like a poles with the, mm -hmm. the roof so they could park their new rv under it and they put it behind like it's in the the corner of their property but it's kind of like the focal of our property yeah. and i they didn't when i talked to him he was like I didn't even think about it like that. It was all amicable. Um, we had it in the beginning of a video or in a video at some point, and I made yeah. it sound like a lot worse than it really was. Anyway, I went over and I was like, ah, it's not done. They haven't finished putting it up yet. Like, would you consider moving it? Uh, and it was, it could just be scooted. It, it wasn't, be scooted. it wasn't like it was bolted into the ground. And it wasn't or even concreted into the ground. And he was like, oh, they're so easy to move. Uh, we actually provided him two days of help, two guys mm -hmm. um, over there. And we just said, we will like pay for anything that needs, you know, we'll provide the labor if you wouldn't mind. And I will landscape any air area of your <laughs> yard you want. Which I don't think he, it wasn't like that was a prerequisite. No, I kept bugging him. I'm yeah. like, hey, Salvador. Like, can, let me do this for you. Yeah, please let me bring plants over. And um, they were all excited about it. And um, anyway, and they said we could come back and do updates. Anyway, the whole situation was totally great um, in the end. Like it just, it worked out. We both got something really great. Um, in fact, they had this little, like a littler shed that was like it, just beyond it, like behind, tucked behind our barn. And what they ended up doing is sliding the whole thing back to where it's behind our greenhouse now. And then the big one is right behind our barn. And I actually love it. Mm. I love it. It kind of encloses the back of our greenhouse and it provides a little bit of a wall. And I don't know, I just really like it back there. Mm, I nice. like the situation. <laughs> Good. Quite a bit, and they do too. Like it's worked out really well for them, and so I'm happy. And they just got a horse. They just put a horse back, like in the area, not in the grass directly behind our barn, but like a little bit further down. They put up some pan, like really nice fence paneling, mm -hmm. and they have a beautiful horse back there. And so, like I just stare at it at the back of our barn, like one day. One day. One day. Uh, next video is planting sumacs and elderberries. I got some tiger eye sumacs and black lace elderberries planted them on the new property and just wanted to talk about them because specifically the sumacs are uh, gorgeous and they're not like the old variety of sumacs that just are invasive and spread themselves everywhere. They will spread um, but not like the old ones so they kind of like probably have a bad reputation just based on like the former varieties but I just wanted to bring some awareness to a beautiful variety of sumac that is doesn't act quite like the old ones. And then of course, black lace elderberries are amazing plants. They do really well here. So it was fun to get some shrubs over there. That was the, the first, those were the first shrubs we planted on the new property. Other than the arbs, I guess you could call the arb shrubs, but I, I kind of look at those as like their own category. I don't even look at them as trees. They're well, like a hedge plant to yeah. me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Jacqueline said, you often make reference to planting the same things each year and are concerned it's not interesting for those who have been around a while. Please know that we too often plant the same things each year and your videos of planting and pruning serve as real life reminders of when we need to do those things. So please keep it up. Thank you. 
I worry about that often. Well, it's kind of like going back to the, you know, do you get bored watching the same videos yeah. and me doing the same things over and over again, planting the same crops. Um, you know, sometimes you've got like this kind of arsenal of go-to plants that you know do well for you in your garden. And then that's kind of what you lean on is mm -hmm. like your, your bone structure. And then you can try out newer things like on a smaller scale to make sure that they do well before you start planting them a lot. But anyway, that was really nice to hear. SF said, will you leave the elderberry alone or will you end up cutting it back at some point? Your neighbors are so beautiful because they leave them alone. That is my full intention. So only plant things out there that I can just leave alone and let them do their thing and let them, I mean, with minor pruning. All, however, our neighbors do not leave theirs alone. They leave the tops alone. But like at the end of the last year, they trimmed them up like trees. Yeah. But they already look like huge, big bushes already. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought like, oh, what are you doing? Ah, you know, and they're absolutely gorgeous this year again. Susanna said, uh, how big is the area you bought? It's still so much space to fill in. Yes, 3.6 acres is what that piece of property is. And we add that to like our 1.9 or something. Mm -hmm. So what is it? 5.5 acres in yeah. the end? Yep. Yeah. Elizabeth L said, I saw some wood chips to the side. How is that project going? I got some wood chips from Chip Drop before the pandemic. Still haven't spread them all, but now the pile is de decomposing nicely and growing a nice crop of oak trees <laughs> on the top. Um, I'm hiring a teen to, this summer to get it all spread. Yeah, you know, we've learned quite a bit about wood chips over the last little bit, specifically since we started to spread some on the new property and what could potentially happen to soil with wood chips that you haven't let decompose properly. So it's probably a good thing that you've let your sit there for a while, mm -hmm. um, especially I would say in areas where things break down quickly. So areas where you're getting a lot of moisture um, and things like that. Uh, they can potentially rob your soil of nitrogen. If you spread out wood chips that haven't properly decomposed on the top of your soil, as they start to break down, they'll rob nitrogen because they're a carbon source, your wood chips. They need nitrogen in order to decompose and, and break down. So they'll steal that from the soil, which can potentially give you chlorosis problems in anything you plant in the area. We deal with chlorosis anyway in our area. So I kind of like almost wanted to put the brakes on and say like no wood chips because I don't want any more, more uh, chlorosis problems. We talked to um, the people at Espoma mm -hmm. and talked to them because they do a lot with soil, you know, pH and soil issues and um, hold on. That's a really loud noise. What yeah, is that? Is. is that a plane? Yeah. Or is it a car? No, that couldn't be a car, could it? Mm -hmm. That car needs a muffler. I think it's a, that's an airplane. There it is. Okay, I think it's passed far enough. We were talking to um, our guy at Espoma and he, we were just kind of talking through all of the implications and things. And he said on an area like what you have up there, it's probably not going to be an issue. It could be, I mean, but you guys are already, you know, doing a lot, a lot of land and sea, a lot of soil acidifier. You're already, you know, throwing those things in and you're already, you know, adding that stuff into the soil. You'll probably be fine, especially because we get hardly any rain. It takes forever for anything to decompose around here. So I don't think in our area it could decompose quick enough to rob enough iron and the iron nitrogen. In the, or nitrogen rather um yeah yeah i think it'll be fine um as long as we just continue to fertilize the things that are out there mm -hmm. uh, i think it'll be fine and i think like maybe keeping them away i don't think it's good to keep thing wood chips up close to plants anyway is it um you know i just don't know mm -hmm. I, I don't know the answer to that but yeah just to to cover over open big open spaces yeah. i think it's totally fine for what we're using we're using them for one weed suppression to um to help keep that powdery dirt level down and it's not something we're going to do forever uh, it's like let's just get a small layer down and then let's just call it good until we can you know plant more things <laughs> the umbrella is like rocking is anything blowing very hard behind me mm -hmm. it's kind of protected no. in here except yeah. for the tree and the umbrella above me um Anyway, yeah, so that's just something to consider with using wood chips. Amy said, did I see cell trays with plants still in them in the greenhouse? Now I don't feel so bad that I still haven't planted everything I grew from seed yet. Yeah, I have, uh, I think I only have three flats left in the greenhouse, one of which needs a trellis. So I've got love and a puff vine that's been growing forever. It's probably all tangled together, but I need to get a, a trellis up for them to grow on. I've got a few tomatoes left and then I've got, what is the last thing in there? Mmm, I've got one tray of something. Oh, milkweed, because uh, I'm working on a project with that this week. So I've got that project or that those seeds left. Connor said, what is considered meadowy for you? I talked about how I would like to plant a few meadow-ish areas out there. For, so meadows for us, like when we go up to the hills, 
there'll be beautiful mountains and whatever and then it'll like clear out you know into a meadow and there's grasses and wildflowers and things like that and i would love to cultivate some areas that are just that maybe with like the few random like a clump of birches or you know something like that and i would love that look uh, in our orchard and i would like to kind of do some pockets of meadow you birches in the orchard no I would like some pockets of meadows in oh. other places. Okay. So I want like a meadow floor underneath the orchard. And then um, like, you know, where the uh, autumn reflection birches mm -hmm. on the way to cut flower garden. I think I would like a big section that's just like breathing space mm -hmm. and something that's just really like natural looking and pollinators will love it. And I feel like we're going to have to do some testing to, to get It'll be a process. I've never done that before. So yeah, it'll definitely- you're artificially creating a meadow where a meadow can't exist. Well, I think that we can err on natives, like true natives. I have a list together mm -hmm. of actual natives. I don't know if they would, uh, down in the valley. I don't I don't know how they'll do. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it will take some, some testing. I think we can pick drought tolerant things and we'll still need to irrigate it obviously, but mm -hmm. I think we can do some things that will handle little less yeah. and i think wild or meadows rather usually um, are cultivated on not rich ground too like you don't want to really work the ground so much mm -hmm. as to what i'm um, it's my understanding anyway a lot of learning to do luciano luciano said are you able to grow american beauty berry nope also button bush nope father Gilla. i don't think so itia nope clethra nope oak leaf hydrangea barely <laughs> <laughs> um, all of those things I have tried. The bottle brush, the Father Gilla, um, I haven't thoroughly tried that one. I had a few in the cold frame that did not winter over, which kind of always gives me the red flag. Um, but all of those things prefer a different pH and different growing situation than we can give them here. Um, so there are things that are gorgeous and things that eventually uh once we have like some bigger projects buttoned up and i can focus a little more attention on some fussier things uh we'll probably give some of those things a try white raven said laura do you feel at some point that when you and other folks have established your plantings that the wind will lessen due to the foliage blocks it will to a certain degree but i think we'll always just have a windy it'll be windy mm -hmm. yeah Next video was planting a container salsa garden. So we had a 24 inch galvanized tub that I filled with good hearted tomatoes, hot and heavy peppers and seeded some cilantro. Then we took it out to the cut flower garden or not the cut flower garden, I guess it's kind of by the high tunnels where we planted the tomatoes and that's where it sits right now. But I just kind of talked about doing different themed gardens and picking smaller varieties for containers if you don't have a lot of space to grow in. First comment was for the love of Pete. It would be interesting to see the difference in proven winter sales slash popularity before and after partnering with Aaron and Laura. I don't know that there's any way that we could ever know. I think it's a, well, such a beneficial thing on both sides because yeah. we have a wonderful group of you guys who watch our videos and who get excited about the plants that we show. And then we, Proven Winters has always had a really nice and uh, loyal customer base. Mm -hmm. They've got good plants. Yeah. That's like, it's They're easy. Really I was plants. using their plants way before we ever even thought we were going to even have a YouTube channel. Yeah. So it was, seemed very natural. That's how all of our partnerships are. It's wonderful. Like Espoma. I've been using Espoma like my parents have been, bef like I, as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. That's and what they've do. used. Yeah. So that was an easy one. Like, well, yeah, I know your stuff works. Mm -hmm. It works for us. So sure. You right. know, um, anyway, we've turned down quite a few other people who I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if your stuff's good. Yeah. I haven't really used it and I haven't really had the need for it. And maybe it is good. I don't know. Yeah. Right. But I'm not gonna, I don't know. It really kind of has just worked out perfect to be able to work with the companies that we mm -hmm. uh, kind of use their stuff anyway, I yeah. guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, Sureka, Sureka said, my mint has aphids. What can I do? Captain Jack's dead bug. Liz said, I noticed your shirts for the video are all similar. Are they sun and gardening shirts? Nope. <laughs> they are whatever I've had in the closet for a lot of your shirts. Yep. Nicole said, do you prune or thin out the good hearted tomatoes? In the south zone 9A, we have trouble with diseases related to humidity and not enough airflow. You know, it might not be a bad idea to cut some of the leaves out, just enough to create a little airflow. I wouldn't cut a whole lot of branching out because it is a determinant type tomato, which means it's gonna produce a determined amount of fruit. It, it does produce a little bit more than like some other determinant tomatoes, like a little bit longer, but it's not gonna produce like an indeterminate tomato where it's just gonna keep going and keep going and keep going. And if you prune off too many branches, you will um, lose some of your crop yield. Uh, so just keep that in mind. 
uh, is today or tomorrow Hartley Delivery Day? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see it come together. Well, <laughs> I don't know when the containers are supposed to arrive with the pieces of the actual structure. Yeah, I'm a little worried actually. Let me, let me look yeah. that up. <laughs> um, I think the installation date is still mid-July. Um, we're working feverishly, not we, the guys that are here are working feverishly on getting things done. We did pr pick out brick. Um, and so the masonry guys, like they, masons, uh, is that what they're called? People they're who called work masons, with, yeah. yeah, with stone and brick and stuff. Anyway, um, so they've got their stuff all lined out. They know what they're gonna do. And hopefully one day they can work on our fireplace inside. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Um, okay, so two, the next two comments, Aaron, maybe you noticed this, but Bucket List on a Budget said, what's that brushing sound? And Jenny said, was the sound we heard during planting Sweet Benjamin sifting in the gravel? Yeah, okay. Was that I my mic? I heard that sound and I do not know what that was. Um, it, it was Those bothersome. aren't the only two, yeah, there were a like, lot I, of comments. I, I, about that sound? Yeah. Yeah, it was super noticeable and it was really bothering me. Um, I don't know what it was. I, I thought maybe I should even put a note in the video, but I don't know if it was your shirt that was rubbing on the microphone. Could have been. Um, or my hair. Sometimes my hair will yeah, get on it. Yeah, but it was so, it was the same sound over and over. Maybe the mic was going out or something. I don't know. Hmm. Hopefully it's not happening this whole video. Yeah, because we only be, have two mics and we're using them both. Yeah, that'd be unfortunate. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, last question on that one was Christy said, what is the brand of sandal you have on? They're called Cushion Airs. They're Birkenstock knockoffs for $24.99 on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty awesome. I usually wear a seven and a half though. Like keep this in mind. If you go to order these, I wear a seven and a half, like usually solid in every single shoe. These run a little bit small. Hmm. So they, they've eventually like stretched out to where they fit my feet a little bit. Like, and I don't have super wide feet or anything, but yeah, I would order maybe a half size bigger if you want to buy them, but they're comfy other than that. Well, one of the pairs that were seven and a half fit great and the other pair didn't. So oh. maybe that's the 24.99 talking. Yeah, right, probably, don't know. the knockoff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next video was harvesting and baking with service berries. So we, I wanted to talk about service berry trees because they're awesome and I think they're underutilized in the garden. They have four seasons of beautiful interest. They provide edible berries. Uh, and I just wanted to talk about them because I think they're a great tree. And then I have one that had a really good set of berries that I wanted to get inside and Benjamin and I made some muffins with them. The Plantastic Nerd said, it seriously warms my heart whenever I see you spend time with Benjamin. I can't imagine how happy they will be in the future for all those wonderful child memories you gifted them. I thankfully also have fond memories of my mother when I was young, running around in the garden, helping her out. I remember gathering yellow daisies for her so we could dye our eggs in Easter or sitting hours long outside enjoying the gorgeous show and smell of our sweet peas, which were her favorite, which were her favorite flowers. God bless you, Laura, and you're doing an absolute wonderful job raising them both. Wish the world had more people like you and Aaron. Oh, my word. Really sweet. Yeah, that is sweet. And I do hope our kids have good memories. I have such good memories of childhood. Um, and like just enjoying the simple things like going and gathering service berries. I remember we would, we had um, some really amazing family friends that we did a lot with and we would celebrate like when certain crops would come into bloom or we'd go uh, like wildflower hunting when specific types would be um, open and it was just like the whole day was centered around enjoying something so simple and I think that those are the biggest memories I, rem I like hearken back to. I don't even like think about vacations and things like that. It was those small things where we made such a big deal out of them. It was it's just such a special thing. Um, Elizabeth said, service berry are said to get a much more intense autumn color in acidic soil. Do you get a strong autumn show in your alkaline soil? Yes, we do. If it's more intense in acidic soil, like, oh my word, I can't even imagine because they're pretty intense here. Lynn said, Benjamin is such a sweet, smart little boy. Did I miss the recipe? I would like to try them. <laughs> yes, you did. I, I forgot to, you're going to have to watch the video and pause on the recipe to write it down. Um, I totally forgot to type it up and write it down. And it's likely like I say, I'll do it. Maybe if I get a free moment in one of these evenings, I'll get it down in the description of that video. Erica said, what is the knife Benjamin is using? I need to get one for my daughter. So you can get on Amazon and type in kid safe knives and a ton of different sets will come up. There was like intense sets where you could get a ton of different styles of knives. I didn't really, I got the one with the three knives because I didn't feel like Benjamin needed an entire set and he doesn't, he doesn't really care. He just wanted something to cut with and they're awesome. And he actually has his own cutting board and he um, cooks alongside me almost, what do you say? Like 
95% of the All dinners I make, he is right there and he wants to measure and pour and cut and whisk and all of those things. It's really, really fun. Uh, Leah said, now I have to put another tree on my list. Can I plant trees in the fall? Yes. I think, you know, most people say plant six weeks or so before first hard frost to give them a chance to root in. I say just get them in the ground as long as you can dig a hole. Make sure that they're well watered. They're going to do better in the ground, insulated with soil all the way around their root ball, um, as opposed to being in a nursery container. So uh, we plant all the time. Last comment, is that you in the power planter ad before this video? I think it is. Is um, it? Yeah, we got a question. For, I can't remember the guy. Um, is it illegally used? No, no, no. They asked. Oh, they, they asked, did. and I said yes. Oh. Does that bother you? No, I just don't know about it. <laughs> like, I'll see a random ad in a magazine. I'm like, what? <laughs> we don't. We don't work with them. Um, but yeah, he, uh, Greg. That's what his name is. He he asked at one point if he could use like a portion of one of our videos. Oh. He's always been nice. Like I've emailed uh -huh. him back and forth several times. Yeah. So. Well. There have been a lot of people who have misused our stuff. They've stolen like little clips to sell their stuff. Yeah. But with my face, that bothers me. Well, you know what it is? It's when uh, companies that we actually like use it. I don't usually mind if they ask mm -hmm. like power planter because I really like the power planter mm -hmm. augers, mm -hmm. even even though we don't work with them. Um, so if they come asking, but like what would bother me is if a knockoff of power planter started using one of our clips mm -hmm. of us using a power planter claiming that it was like theirs oh, or sure. something yeah Ms. that Rippinson. bothers me because i've seen that happen a lot yeah okay last video from this week okay i want to check my mic time right now now we did get up and move so that took some time but an hour and 23 minutes so far Okay, digging ranunculus corms and planting more flower seeds. I had three of my five uh, varieties of ranunculus were done, spent. They um, were ready to be dug and prepped for storage. So I went through some of the steps that I do or I'm doing to do that. And then I wanted to get some more flower seeds going in the garden. So I planted calendula, nasturtiums, uh, marigolds, some ornamental corn. I'm so excited about that. Erin, did I show you a picture of the glass gem corn that I've planted? I don't think you did. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, anyway, the thing about corn, and I explained this in the video, I've never really timed things out well enough to have multiple varieties of corn on the property at the same time, because you have to have them, I believe, like 100 yards away from each other and or stagger the planting time so they don't bloom at the same time because they will cross pollinate. And the weird thing about corn is that when they cross pollinate, you'll actually see results in the current growing year. But like if squash or pumpkins cross pollinate, they'll still come up true to variety that year. It's if you gather the seed and plant them the next year, then you can get some weird crosses. But with corn, like it all happens that year. So you have to be very careful. And it's kind of perfect because my ambrosia corn is up like a foot or more already. And I just planted the glass gem. They're at least a hundred yards away from each other. I don't know. What do you think, Erin? Like at least a hundred yards yeah. more than that probably. So I think in both respects, they won't cross pollinate and we should be good. And we'll get two very good, good crops of corn. <laughs> Uh, Cynthia said, sunflowers just grow to defy Aaron. <laughs> Revenge for last summer's pull death by the gazebo. And then uh, we are never going to let Aaron forget that sunflower murder. There's one in the garden that I'm not going to tell you about, Aaron. Really? Yep. It's coming up in the middle of a plant in a flower bed. And I'm not going to tell you about it. Not until it's in full bloom. I'll go look for it. The one in the garden. Aaron doesn't really mess with the stuff in the raised beds because everything kind of looks like it was meant to be there, even though the sunflower's not. It's blooming right now and it's gorgeous. Um, I can see it right now. What is with all the hair? Russell's, where is Russell, by the way? He's around here somewhere. He was up in the bedroom, like incessant this morning. I had Samantha oh, yeah. and I was feeding her and it was making Samantha all happy, but she's got like death grip hands. <laughs> So I kind of feel bad for the cats. They get close. Anyway, I don't know. He may be still inside. Um, Victor said, what happened to the camera quality? Oh, oh yeah. Did you put that note in? I put the marker. I wanted to put a note in that said, sorry, that all the close-up shots were not in focus. Oh, yeah. I don't. That could have been it. It also could have just been a question about the, uh, about the new camera looking different from the old one. Oh. Well, I just noticed that when I was trying to show all the times I tried to show the corms up close, it was out of focus. Yeah. And like the, the thing in the background was in focus. Yeah. That happens every once in a while. I can't see in the screen when it's super bright a lot of the time. And that bums me out when it happens, but it just does. It's kind of like the nature of the beast. Katie said, you've mentioned that the half inch drip tubes need to be on grids to water properly. Do you think the quarter inch tubes are similar and that they'd benefit from being tied into each other? 
Spin yeah, the raised beds. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. But if you're going really short distances with the quarter inch, mm -hmm. I don't think it really matters. I mean, if you're going like less than ten feet, right? It's just. I think the reason that a grid system makes sense with the bigger stuff, with the half inch, is because oftentimes you're going like a hundred feet or, or more. Or more. Yeah. And so having that all tied in is is mm -hmm. beneficial, but it'd be worth a shot though, like to see what would happen in the yeah, vegetable garden. I would maybe. wager that it would water the same. You think so? Yeah. Queen Bee said, was there a reason you left the leafy tops on the ranunculus as you dried them, or is it okay to cut them off at that stage? I think I mentioned in the video um, that I leave the leaves and the stems if they mm -hmm. still have some green, because I think the corms will still soak in some of that energy. They'll draw some of that energy down and store it in their corms for next year's bloom um, while they're, they're drying. It happens with garlic and onions and all of that, any kind of bulb crop. So they're sitting in the garage still, still, still laying there. There's still a tiny bit of green, so I'm not quite ready to cut off the tops, but I figure they if you have the space to lay them out, just let, let them lay out until the greens are pretty yellow or dried up. Doesn't ha take very long in our climate for that to happen usually. Uh, Terry said, if we want ranunculus in our landscape, would it be better to keep corms together when planting or should we divide them each year and plant the corms in clusters? Oh, if you can keep them in the ground. If I could keep mine in the ground, I wouldn't dig them up and, and separate them, that's for sure. You absolutely could divide them, and I think that plants usually benefit from being divided, but if I could leave mine in the ground, you better believe I wouldn't be digging them up to divide them. I don't I hardly ever divide anything. Too much work. <laughs> Becky said, wait, when do you pull up garlic? Um, okay, so this year was a little bit different. I planted a lot earlier than last year, um, like probably a few weeks earlier, and then it got really warm right after I planted. And so they grew a lot, a lot more than tip they typically do. Like they were at least a foot or more tall by the time we went into winter. And usually they've just sprouted. I see a little bit of green or, or maybe not at anything at all by winter time and then they do all their growing in during the next season but since I had so much growth last year and they um, they just didn't need as long in the ground this year so I was able to pull them up like three weeks earlier than normal usually it's like a first week of July sort of job um, but you want to look at the garlic plant itself and let that be your guide and don't really stick so much to a like this I need to do it this date of the year because if things get off depending on how the weather is going and you look at the state of the leaves of your garlic first off you'll start to see the top starting to dry you might see some plants flop over um, but the biggest indicator are the bottom leaves um, the way those leaves look is a direct indicator to how the paper covering is around that head of garlic and the less paper you have around that garlic the shorter shelf life you will have if you're trying to store it so usually I wait until the bottom two or three leaves have kind of dried up and the rest of the stalk may look pretty green, but I pull it at that point. If I wait until the whole stalk was dried up, then I would have hardly any paper holding those cloves together anymore. Um, and that's not a good thing. So anyway, I just waited until the garlic was looking dried leaves on the bottom and some of the plants were completely flopped over. Like they were just ready to be pulled and it ended up being a really beautiful harvest. We have videos, a lot of videos about garlic up. Messy Bun Soap said, are we not going to talk about the size of that cabbage next to the calendula bed? Uh, it's massive and amazing. Yeah, our cabbage tends to do real well around here. I think it might be, maybe it's our climate. I do amend with Biotone and Land and Sea. Uh, last year, we should put that picture up here. Remember that head of cabbage I harvested yeah, last year? Yeah. It was like, well, the plant itself was massive and those plants are kind of following suit. Anyway, they're all starting to form really pretty heads. It's kind of a hard crop for me to harvest because they add so much weight and be like beauty to a space, even in a vegetable garden, like the hedge and the cut flower garden. I want to harvest it so I can donate a bunch of them, but at the same time, I don't want to harvest it because they're so pretty. Anne-Marie Dunn said, what kind of stone are you walking on in this garden? I really like the neat look of it. That's just called a three quarter chip in the color blue is what they call it, which is really hard to find now. Yeah. Really Although Chad hard. said that he found some more of it. Oh, he did. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen it. I don't oh. know if it's the same or not. We but. need to buy a bunch. Yeah. Have a big pile somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and a last comment is the sweet romance lavender on drip. Yes, it is. It runs every three days. Correct. Every three days. D every other day, maybe, or every. You, you might be right. It might every, be every three days. I think you had it on every three days last year. Yeah. And it runs for an hour or something every three days. Or yeah. <laughs> I should have looked it up, but I, I think it's it could be like forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't get I a think ton that of water. That sounds right. It's I mean it's pretty drought tolerant, and it, it, 
on purpose we don't give it a lot of water. right well and it's on like it's in full sun all day and it's on the like right by the gravel so it gets a ton of heat from that so it does pretty well in the every i think it's every three days Anyway, that is it for today's recap video. Anything else, Erin? Am I forgetting anything in our vast amount of <sighs> subjects we've talked about today? I don't think so. I don't either. So I hope you guys all have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.